Let's dive right in. This video is a walkthrough for a free, functional, and customizable asset I have created for storing thin films. It's available on Gumroad and is linked in the description. There are timestamps in the video for using the asset, and the latter half offers an explanation for why I created it for those who are interested. The asset is relatively simple. It shows all the parameters needed to make boxes for storing thin films. The relevant parameters can be found and changed in the modifier tab. You can adjust the length, width, height, and chosen capacity. And these are all parameters that can be chosen based on your films or specific setup. You also have controls for the height, width, and thickness of the individual separators. The parameters are detailed in millimeters, and the default option is set up for one inch by one inch films that are just over one millimeter thick, because this is a common substrate, or at least I've encountered it several times in labs. Whenever a parameter is updated in the modifier tab, the result is shown both in the text accompanying the object and in the box itself. There are adjustments for wall thickness, base thickness, and there's also the option to add or remove an asymmetric cutout to separate the front from the back. Some simple math is also performed and shown that makes it easier to work with this asset. The output shows the space between dividers, the total length of the box, the height, and the width. And this includes the wall thickness, the stored item width, and the tolerance. And you can see what is included in each of these calculations. There is also an option to add or remove a sliding lid with its own adjustable parameters that will be offset from the main box for better 3D printing. The sliding lid also has an asymmetric cutout and a cutout on the back to make it easier to work with in glove boxes. A key point for both the box and the lid is the incorporation of a print tolerance option, and this is to account for different 3D printers. I have made several prototypes for different size devices and typically find that 0.5 millimeters or a 1 millimeter tolerance is sufficient using my Ender 3 Pro. However, at the university, we've worked with Ultimakers, both two and three, I believe, and sometimes the tolerance needs to be increased or decreased depending on the specific printer. The sliding lids can be easily kept in place over the box using an elastic band. Scrolling down, we also have some very simple cosmetic options for those who want to assign a material to this and potentially use it in a render. If you do want to do that, there's also an option to remove the text. Finally, when ready to print, simply toggle the ready to print option. This will remove the text and multiply the dimensions by 10. From here, select the box, go to File, Export, and choose STL. Navigate to whatever directory you want to save to, choose a file name, and under the options, choose Selection Only, and leave everything else by default, making sure that you have Apply Modifiers selected as well. From here, simply export the STL file. I believe that I use Blender with its default unit settings, and in my experience, this works well with Cura for slicing the STL. If you open the STL in Cura and find the dimensions are incorrect, you can adjust them using the Scale tab. A quick sanity check is to look at the Y axis value because this is going to capture the length. Because we're printing both a lid and the box, the X dimension won't be accurate and the Z dimension won't be accurate either. But the Y is a very quick check, and if we switch back to Blender, we can see that our total length value is 50 millimeters here, and back in Cura, it is once again 50 millimeters. You may notice that the slicer is complaining a little bit about things like overlapping edges and non-manifold geometry. This is because Blender doesn't handle Booleans particularly well, and Cura is right about both of these things. That said, I have managed to successfully slice and print these files as exported from Blender without any further cleanup. From here, we can apply whatever slicing settings we want. You can see from our preview, this is going to print relatively cleanly and that the file is actually designed to work without requiring any support material whatsoever. It's very straightforward. I will show a few examples on for boxes that have different capacities and were created specifically for either one inch by one inch substrates or for the transistor dimensions used in the research lab that I work in. And from this point in the video, I'll go ahead and describe why I made this asset and some of the inspiration for it. During my PhD, I worked with thin film devices. Mine were solar cells. In my current job, the group works with transistors and capacitors, but this design would be useful for OLEDs or really any thin film, microscope slide, or even cover slips. All of these, or at least the ones I worked with, were typically made from ITO coated glass slides, or they were chips cut directly from silicon wafers. In several labs, I have found that devices are often stored in disposable plastic petri dishes that sometimes have an internal divider separating the dish into four quadrants. 
I find these problematic for a number of reasons. It's rare that a process that uses physical vapor deposition or sputtering to deposit layers or electrodes produces only four films per batch, and suddenly you require multiple Petri dishes. The dishes are never fitted to the substrate, so they can rattle around, in some cases flip over, you can risk damaging the film, or when you mix different films together, it can be nearly impossible to differentiate them. The Petri dishes are typically polystyrene, they're transparent and colorless, and that means that they aren't really ideal for storing light-sensitive samples, which was always frustrating when I worked with organic semiconductors and perovskites. But more than anything, they just really aren't efficient for storing large numbers of samples. A few rounds of device trials quickly builds up into multiple stacks that creates a lot of clutter, and they aren't necessarily cheap. 3D printed custom storage is hardly new, and there are plenty of great examples floating around Twitter. Of the more unique designs I've seen, the Capybara NMR2 holder is probably my favorite. The main point is that these pretty well significantly cut down on the amount of space needed to store large numbers of devices. I've known labs that make drawer inserts of these for storing hundreds of thin film solar cells. They can also be made to your batch output capacity, so if your evaporation is 12 films per round, or 16, you can exactly match that per box. The lab I currently work in makes exactly those numbers between 12 and 16, and so we have custom boxes made for precisely those numbers of films. The boxes are also pretty convenient for shipping and transporting samples without damage. The labs I have worked in have used them to send samples around the world for analysis without breaking any devices. For cases where you have multiple users and the option to use different color filaments, they can also be a very convenient way to keep track of your own work in busy labs. And finally, I'd like to note that I've made versions of these boxes for several years. In the past, they were all made with more traditional CAD software, specifically Fusion 360 and SolidWorks. I was inspired to make these by the measurable add-on released by Johnny Matthews and MakerTales. The MakerTales channel specifically focuses on using Blender for 3D printing and is an excellent resource. The measurable add-on is available for $3 US, I'm not sponsored in any way by them, but I found the add-on was very helpful for when I was validating dimensions as I was outputting a number of things and working with STLs. And both Johnny Matthews and the MakerTales channel have videos detailing the use of this add-on. And I'll put links to those in the description. Overall, I want to take advantage of geometry nodes to make a functional tool available for anyone working with thin films in a lab. If you end up using this to save space and set up your own custom storage in a lab or otherwise, I'd love to see it. You can tag me at CG Figures on Twitter. Until now, most of the assets I've made have been intended for use in 3D scenes, but if there are other practical assets you think would be useful for your labs that require some degree of customization, I welcome any suggestions in the comments. As always, I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon who make it possible for me to make oddly specific customized assets available for free. If you'd like to support the creation of more functional assets, science-specific assets, and tutorials for scientists, consider joining. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing, sharing it with your friends and colleagues, and joining our community on the Blender.Science Discord. And with that, as always, thanks for coming out, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.